Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at some standard problems involving Laurent series. We're going to be uh, taking a look at these particular problems. The first one we'll work out in depth, and the second one I'll leave for you to do, but I'll give you a few hints at the end of the video. Taking a look at these problems, uh, we're going to run across a couple things that we'll want to follow every time we work one of these Laurent series problems. And uh, in general terms, they are the following. Whenever possible, we'd like to use a known series to help us out. For reasons that are discussed in your text and we've discussed in class, it's a little bit hard to compute the coefficients um, directly. Even though we have a, a formula for them involving a contour integral, what we'd like to do is, whenever possible, use a known series so that we can avoid uh, doing unnecessary work. Now the series that we've known so far have all been Taylor series, and that's going to be the case here for the problems that we work with. Uh, you want to recall the Taylor series for 1 over 1 minus z. Remember the uh, corresponding Taylor series is a geometric series. e to the z, sine of z, and the cosine of z. Now the second thing we want to remember is that uh, our Laurent series are all in terms of uh, powers of z minus z naught, where z naught is what we call the center of the series. So we'll want to keep the center in mind and we'll also want to keep in mind whether the annulus we're dealing with is bounded or unbounded as we decide what the coefficients are that should go in this series. Now both of these points will become a bit more clear as we go through some examples. and We'll come back to them a little bit later in the movie. Taking a look at the first problem, and at part A, we want to find the Laurent series for the function 1 over z times z minus 2 that is valid in the annular region where the modulus of z minus 2 ranges between 0 and 2, not including either of the extremes. Now as we think about what the answer should look like, we want a Laurent series, and the annular region tells us that this series should be centered at 2. Now what that means is that our Laurent series should be in terms of powers, both negative and positive, of z minus 2. And so uh, what we'd like to do is, is take a look at the function. And notice that already it has a z minus 2 in the denominator. Now that's going to fall right in line with what we'd like the answer to involve. And so um, really all we need to do is expand the 1 over z. If I can find an expansion for 1 over z, then I can just take those powers of z minus 2 and then divide each term through by a z minus 2 and it will just end up shifting the powers just a little bit. So I'm going to ignore that z minus 2 and just focus on the simpler 1 over z. Now remember, our powers are supposed to be in terms of uh, z minus 2. And so what I'll need to do is take the 1 over z and express it so that it's not uh, so clearly in terms of just z alone, but in terms of z minus 2. Now I'll do that pretty simply just by taking z minus 2, sticking it where the z was, and then seeing what I have to do to compensate. Now I need the denominator to equal z. I put a z minus 2 in there, so to compensate to keep things equal, I'll need to put a plus 2 to cancel out the, the 2 and the minus 2 and, and uh, leave it equal to 1 over z. Now I have a, a z minus 2 quantity there. I also have a constant in the denominator. And thinking about what we know about geometric series and the, uh, the uh, function 1 over 1 minus z, you might uh, see this next trick coming. We're going to take a look at that 2 and factor it out so that it, we have a 1 half in front of a fraction and that 2 with a 2 factored out becomes this 1. Now the z minus 2, when I factor 2 out of it, I'll get a, a fraction. And then I'm going to take this plus sign and write it as a minus a negative. Now the reason we're doing that is, of course, because this form uh, is something we're very familiar with by now. We know that we can find a Taylor series for that function. It will just involve uh, taking a geometric series with powers of minus z minus 2 over 2. Now you can sort of see that we're summing from k equals 0 to infinity. The minus uh, becomes this minus 1 to the k. The z minus 2 will become z minus 2 to the k. And then the 2 would be 2 to the k, but because I have this extra 2 in front, that will change it to 2 to the k plus 1. And uh, that's our expansion for the function 1 over z. Now remember, though, that we want to find an expansion for 1 over z times z minus 2. So what I'll do is divide through 
on the left and on the right by z minus 2. And that will give me uh, the series there. I'll take the z minus 2 and once I take the kth power and divide through by another z minus 2, I'll get k minus 1 as my exponent. And then if I'd like to uh, get it back in terms of powers of z minus 2 to the k, um, I would shift the index that will make the index start at minus 1 and it will bump these other exponents up. All right. Well, having taken uh, a look at part A, let's move on. Well, let's, let's review actually uh, what we discussed for the general guidelines. Remember, we said that uh, whenever possible, we want to use a known Taylor series. Now, where did we do that here? Well, we had a series for 1 over 1 minus z that we kind of uh, adapted to use with this other expression in place of the z, but it came out to we know how to take uh, the Taylor series of that kind of function. Okay, again, um, we want to start by concentrating on the annular region. Where is it centered? Now, we knew that the annular region was centered at 2. That told us that our powers should involve z minus 2s, and that told us that whenever we saw something that wasn't a z minus 2, we want to replace that by something that involves z minus 2. Okay, now uh, let's use these ideas and move on to part B. In part B, you want to find the, an expansion for the same function, but this time the annulus is centered at 3 and uh, has an outer radius of 1 and an inner radius of 0. Now, we know that our solution should be something involving powers of z minus 3, and that will be helpful to us. But as we take a look at the original function, we'll see that both the z and the z minus 2, neither one of them uh, currently looks like it has a z minus 3. Now I could try to replace the z by a z minus 3 plus 3, and I could try to replace the z minus 2 by something similar, but because they're times together, that won't necessarily get me very far very fast. So what I'll do is split these apart. I'm going to use the partial fraction decomposition, which uh, doing a little bit of scratch work, I'll find to be 1 over 2 quantity z minus 2 minus 1 over 2z. Okay. Now what I'll do is expand each of these in terms of uh, powers of z minus 3, and uh, then I'll take the series for both of them and combine them by subtracting at the very end. So moving along, that first term, 1 over 2 times z minus 2. Now what I'd like to have is 2 times z minus 3, but it, if I were to expand this, I'd have a 2z minus 4. If I were to expand this, I'd have a 2z minus 6. So I'll make it equal, I'll compensate by adding a 2 on the very end. Now because I'm shooting for a familiar series, I'm going to again use that trick of taking this number and factoring it out. So I'll factor a 2 out to change that 2 into a 1. And I'll uh, factor a 2 out of this term, to, and it will just become z minus 3. Then I'll write this addition as a minus a negative. And in that way, you'll see that we are, um, we've got a geometric series. We'll have uh, 1 half times the sum of the different powers of minus 1 times z minus 3 all to the kth power. Okay, now moving along to the other term, the other series. 1 over 2z. Uh, again, we're going to take uh, z minus 3 and put that in where we see a z, but then we'll have to compensate by adding a 6 to the denominator to keep it equal to the 2z we originally had. Now using the same trick, we'll factor a 6 out of the constant term there to make it a 1, factoring a 6 out of the 2z minus 3, and then writing the addition as a, a minus a negative will uh, result in an expression like that. And then we'll then be able to write this as a geometric series this time we'll have minus one-third to the k times z minus three to the k with an additional one-six in the sum. Now remember, these were the, uh, the two series that partial fraction decomposition involved. So I'll, to get my result, to find the series for one over z times z minus two, I'll take the series for the one and subtract the series for the other one. And uh, that will give me my coefficient on z minus three to the k. Now, if you want, you can get a common denominator. Uh, if you were going to generate terms, this might be a little bit more easy a formula to work with, um, and it looks like that. Uh, either expression, though, will work just fine as far as the Laurent series goes for us. Okay. All right, now we use those same uh, ideas. Uh, you'll remember we uh, used a familiar uh, series, 
We did that here with the, uh, the 1 over 1 minus z series, which we adapted uh, both times. We also kept our eye on where the annulus was uh, centered. Centered at 3, which means our powers need to be z minus 3s which means that if you see something that doesn't look like a z minus 3, you need to change it so that it does look like a z minus 3, while still being equal to what it was before. Now in part C, um, taking a look at the expansion, we want to expand the same function. This time we want to expand it in a region where the modulus of z minus 2 is greater than 2. Now if you're looking at a picture, you'll look, notice that the, uh, when the modulus of z minus 2 equals 2, that describes a circle centered at 2 with radius 2. When we say that the modulus is uh, greater than 2, we're just talking about the region that lies outside of that circle. Now because it's centered at 2, we know that we should have an expansion that looks something like this. And as we, uh, as we saw in part A, we get that by doing it the same steps we did there. So what are we going to do differently to get the series in part C? Well, here's the difference. In part A, we started off by taking that 1 over z. You'll recall that the z minus 2 we were going to just deal with later. It wasn't a problem. We expanded 1 over z. We wrote that in terms of z minus 2. And then we factored that 2 out so that we could get a 1 and so we could get a geometric series. Uh, now, that geometric series converges when the thing you're subtracting from 1 in the denominator has a modulus less than 1. Now if you were to simplify that expression, you'll see that that corresponds to having the modulus of z minus 2 less than 2, which is what we wanted to, uh, to do in part A. However, we also know that this series will not converge when this uh, quantity we're subtracting from 1 has a modulus greater than 1. So this series will not be valid in the region we care about in part C. So what do we do differently? Well, we're going to, uh, we're going to do something very similar in the beginning. We're going to take 1 over z and expand that, and then we'll, uh, we'll put the extra z minus 2 in there at the end, like we did in part A. And as we get to uh, 1 over z, we'll do the same thing we did before. We need to replace that z by something that looks like z minus 2, and then add something at the end to compensate. Now here's the trick, though, that will make this valid in a different region. Earlier, we factored the 2 out so we could get the 1 there. We're going to get a 1 and use a geometric series again, but this time, instead of factoring out the 2, we're going to factor out the z minus 2. When I do that, taking a z minus 2 out of both terms in the bottom, I'll get a, a 1 from what was the z minus 2, and then this 2 will have a z minus 2 above it. Now, as you continue along, you'll recognize that we can write this as a geometric series, but if we do that, we'll be dealing with powers of 2 over z minus 2, the z minus 2 will be in the denominator, and this series will converge when minus 2 over z minus 2 has a modulus less than 1. If you rearrange this one, though, you'll see that this corresponds exactly to the statement that the modulus of z minus 2 is greater than 2, which is what we care about in part c. All right, so it's a little bit different of a factorization, and it does put the z minus 2 in the denominator, but remember, we do care about some z minus 2s in the denominator, so, as well as in the numerator, so this will, this will work. Okay, so to take this idea and carry it forward from start to finish, um, we're going to, uh, to take these two ideas, we're going to still apply them, and we'll look like, our, our solution will look like this. We're going to take the 1 over z times z minus 2. Since our series is centered at 2, we know that our answer should be in terms of powers of z minus 2, we're going to take the 1 over z and deal with that first and just put the extra z minus 2 in at the end. 1 over z is, just in terms of z, we do want to get it in terms of z minus 2 because that's where we're centered. So we'll express it as 1 over z minus 2 plus 2. Now here's where the difference happens from part A to part C. At this point, we want to create a 1 in the denominator so we can use our geometric series. But because we want the z minus 2 uh, to mo have a modulus greater than 2, we'd like to create z minus 2 in the denominator. In order for that to happen, we will factor z minus 2 out of the z minus 2 term and out of the 2, and we'll get, uh, 
1 plus 2 over z minus 2, which we can then rewrite as minus a negative. Now, as we expand this out, we know that this will be a geometric series once we write it out. We'll uh, write it in this way. The minus and the 2 will be raised to the k. The z minus 2 will also be raised to the k. Because I had an extra z minus 2 in the denominator, that will bump the exponent on the z minus 2 in the denominator up by 1. All right, so I have an expansion for 1 over z. Here it is. Now I'd like to keep it, uh, I, I'd like to expand 1 over z times z minus 2. So I'll divide both sides of this by z minus 2. And what that will do is put an extra z minus 2 in the series in the denominator. So change the exponent to k plus 2. Now if you like, you can leave this like this. It's a perfectly valid expansion. You'll notice that um, here as k increases, we're actually moving to the left. We're taking the, um, the larger powers of z minus 2 in the denominator in the um, principal part. If you want to expand this though in sort of our familiar format of the Laurent series where we just have powers of z minus 2 and we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity, uh, we're starting out that way anyway, you can make a substitution of your variable of index. Instead of letting k run from 0 to infinity, we can note that uh, here we have k plus 2, or if we were to write this expression up top like we see here, this would look like z minus 2 raised to the minus k minus 2. So if I let j equal minus k minus 2, I'll get the exponent uh, that I want. And in substituting, I'll replace this k by a minus j minus 2. And instead of going from k equals 0 to infinity, we plug those in and we see that the sum will start at minus infinity and, and end at minus 2. All right. So we have, uh, we've talked about problem 1 there. And we've given you some clues on how to approach these things. In looking at problem 2, we want to uh, take a look at a slightly different function. And the details will be a, a little bit different. But those same ideas will, will come into play. So as we take a look at these, we're going to want to use known series if we can. And the series for 1 over 1 minus z will be our, our invaluable uh, series. We'll come back to that again and again. We'll also want to take a look at the center of our annulus and make sure that the powers we're dealing with match what you see there inside the modulus for each of these annulus uh, descriptions. Okay, so to give a few more pointers, I would encourage you to go through and work these out on your own. If you want, we have a couple hints here, and I'll just talk about these briefly, but really you should pause the video and try and work these out yourself. For part A, when you're expanding in the Laurent series in this annular region, we know that we want the powers in our series to be powers of z plus 1, which means that really I just need to expand 1 over z minus 2 squared, and then I'll be able to just attach that z plus 1 at the very end. So in spanning, expanding 1 over z minus 2 squared, you'll see that that squared introduces a new element we didn't see in the earlier example. But you'll start out the same way. We'll start with 1 over z minus 2. We want to write things in terms of z plus 1, so we'll change that to z plus 1 minus 3. And then if we can expand this using our geometric series trick, we'll have an expansion for 1 over z minus 2. If we then take the derivative of the left-hand side and of the series, term by term, we will get an expansion for minus 1 over z minus 2 squared, which if you were to change the sign would give you an expansion for 1 over z minus 2 squared, and then you could continue on with the problem. Now in part b, we're expanding about the other singularity, about z minus 2. So this time, the 1 over z minus 2 squared, we're just going to uh, forget about that for just a second, because that will be part of our answer. The 1 over z plus 1, we'll expand that by writing z plus 1 in terms of z minus 2, and then using a, our geometric series trick and continuing on as, as before. Um, now in part c, we have uh, the same center for our annulus, but this time we're, we're looking at moduli that are bigger than 3 rather than less than 3. So we'll do the same trick we saw in part c of the other problem. We're going to start off in the same way as in part b by writing 1 over z plus 1 in terms of z minus 2. But this time, instead of factoring out the 3 from the constant term, we're going to factor the z minus 2, which we see in the other part. So factoring z minus 2 out, We'll see a 1, we'll see a minus a negative 3 over z minus 2, and we can continue on with the geometric series formula as before. All right, 
Good luck on these problems. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, either in the comments or by contacting me directly. Thanks.